ان الحمد لله ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في كتابه يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون وقال تعالى يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء اتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا قال الله سبحانه وتعالى يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد اذا ان تستدعوا السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته every time i give a khutba i keep saying that uh, hoping that things would get better for muslims but unfortunately we are living in a time when each progressive day things seem to be getting worse and worse for muslims so i decided that from now on i will focus more on the optimistic side of what's happening than on the pessimistic side of what's happening in the world partly for the well-being of my own soul my own blood pressure and my own health i don't want to get up one morning read the newspaper and then pop off by the shock of things that are happening so what has happened i get up this morning and i see that there's a billion dollar fence already built by bulgaria and hungary to keep muslim refugees out of europe and my first reaction was how could this be that people are so frightened of muslims that they are spending billions of dollars to build a wall to keep muslims out fences which are electric is it's like keeping predators out they are so afraid of muslims what has happened to us that people are so frightened of us there is a very famous tradition of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in which he says you are not a believer you are not a believer you are not a believer if your neighbor is frightened of you so what does this fear of islam and muslims signal about us but the positive aspect is that at least in america alhamdulillah we are much safer here we are talking about a wall there they are already building a wall but the question really is that in spite of all the circumstances that we live in whatever whether we live in poverty or whether we live in prosperity both are tests from allah subhanahu allah tests us by giving us abundance and then depriving us allah tests us by giving us freedom and then depriving us of freedom he wants to know how do we live under oppression and he wants to know how we would live when we are in power this is very important every circumstances that we face is a test and it is important that in each circumstances we live a good life for those of us who feel that they live in oppressed conditions look at others look at what's happening with the syrian refugees look at what has happened to the palestinian for more than 60 years and then thank god for the condition that you live in in the last two months this country has become richer by 1 trillion dollars all those muslims who have invested in the stock market are definitely richer by 5 to 10% today there may be fears some people are definitely suffering the rise of islamophobia but there are many who are benefiting either look at the positive side and be grateful to god that is important the absence of looking at the positives and dwelling on the negatives leads to despair and despair eventually leads to kufr do not despair in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always have good expectations if you despair the ultimate condition of despair is suicide and that is forbidden that is haram in our faith so we do not take the first step in the direction of that that is forbidden 
So it is very important for all of us to, to learn how to live in any circumstances a good life. But what is a good life? How do you define what is a good life? Today we feel insecure, so is safety, <coughs> the presence of safety, a good life? Today we feel threatened, is the absence of threat a good life? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran has defined what good life is. It's called al hayat al tayyibah What is al hayat al tayyibah What is the good life? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, أَعُوذِ بِاللَّهِ مِنِ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بِسْمِ اللَّهِ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ مَنْ عَمِلَ صَوَالِهَنْ مِنْ ذَكْرٍ أَوْ أُنْسَى In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sometimes I feel as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is anticipating an age in which these verses will become more important and relevant. And therefore he says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَوَالِهَنْ مِنْ ذَكْرٍ أَوْ أُنْسَى All those who do good deeds, whether they are men or women, this argument that our faith is, is uh, misogynistic, that we marginalize women in our culture and our religion. No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayah is treating both men and women as equal moral actors. And saying very clearly, it doesn't matter what your gender is. I expect you to live a good life. Those who do good deeds, whether men or women, or who are women, while they are believers, it also tells you what are the two essential conditions of a good life. In order to be able to lead a good life, you have to be a believer and you have to be doing good deeds. So you do amal salihan wa huwa mu'min, while one is a believer. So it is an important condition that these and beliefs, your heart and your actions are combined. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Man amira salihan zakari wa unsa wa huwa mu'min fala nahi annahum hayatu tayyibah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward them with a good life. Fala nahi annahum ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu yahmalu And not only will he reward them with good life, this goodness which will be rewarded to them will be an appropriation, an extension in accordance to the good life that they have led. It has led to commentators, it comes only once in the Quran, but there's a lot been written. If you Google Hayat al Tayyibah, there are many, many books in many, many languages that are out there. But most commentators have either understood the good life as the life after the hereafter, that you live a good life on earth, which is you do good deeds and you be a believer, and when you die, you go to heaven. That is how Hayat al Tayyibah is being written. But there are others who say, no, this is about this world. Living a good life is in this world. It is very important. The good life is not a destiny, it is the journey itself. If you are wanting to go to Dar Salaam, if you want to go to the house of peace, if you want to be united with God, you have to make sure that your journey is that of a good life. It's not an end product. It is the process of living which has to be a good life. That is very important. So I'm borrowing one scholar's interpretation of what is Hayat al Tayyibah. And I like it very much. If you want details, you can approach me after the Qurban and I can give you the reference. This scholar, a medieval scholar, describes the meaning of Hayat al Tayyibah as this A good life is a mod in which the individual is aware of God and enjoys a noble enjoys a noble standing in the eyes of God. That is incredible. The way he has understood this ayah is profound. He says, if you are living a good life, it means, number one, that you are aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that you know God, you have knowledge of God, and God not only has knowledge of us, God knows everything, obviously, by definition, God knows everything, but not only does he have knowledge of us, but we enjoy good standing in the eyes of God. And if you, it's, it's like saying like your credit rating. Your credit rating is what is your standing in the eyes of banks. They look at your credit rating and they decide whether you're worth risking a loan or not. So what is your credit rating in the eyes of God? 
That is what Hayatul Tayyibah is. If you are living the good life, you will have a noble standing in the eyes of God. Is this an eccentric interpretation of the Quranic verse? Certainly not. There are many ahadiths. I'm going to share a couple of them. There is one hadith of Pussy in which Prophet says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that when my servant thinks of me, I am with him. When my servant thinks of me, I am with him. So all of you today in the Salatul Jum'ah are thinking of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I hope. And while you are thinking of him, he is thinking of you. But this is more. He is with you. He's not saying that when my servant thinks of me, I am thinking of my servant. He says, when my servant thinks of me, I am with my servant. When my servant remembers me in his heart, I remember him in my heart. When my servant remembers me loudly, I remember him loudly. When my servant mentions me in a gathering, I mention him in a gathering better than that cat. I'm standing here in perhaps the most noble people of the state of Delaware, maybe even in America. And I'm mentioning the name of God. But God's promise to me is that he will mention me in the presence of a more noble assembly. And what would that be? That would be either an assembly of prophets or an assembly of angels. So when you mention God aloud, he mentions you in the company of his angels. He says, if you take one step towards me, I will take four steps towards you. If you walk towards me, I will run towards you. That is what it means to enjoy a noble standing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In another tradition attributed to Abu Huraira, you will find it in Sahih Muslim. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu says that the Prophet said that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes somebody, loves somebody, that is when Allah, when you are enjoying a virtuous status in the eyes of God, when God thinks highly of you, in a separate tradition, a pathway to that is given. Those who fulfill their obligations and do more than obligations, who do the nawafil, it is with every nawafil that God's love for you increases. If you just fulfill your obligation, the deal is done. You have a no, there is no balance of payments. You don't owe God anything. But when you do the extra, that's when He begins to love you. And when He loves you, He calls Gabriel, angel, and says, O oh, Jibrail, I love so and so. So love him. And Jibreel alayhi salam then goes to the angels and says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves so and so. And therefore, I love him or her. And I want you, all the angels in this creation, to love him or her. Then all the angels, according to this tradition, spread out into the cosmos. They talk to plants, they talk to animals, they talk to all other living spiritual beings and even to planets, etc. And say, God loves so and so. And therefore, Jibreel loves so and so. And therefore, all the angels of God love so and so. And therefore, the cosmos will love so and so. That is what it means if you live a good life. If the entire cosmos is in love with you. Because you are someone that God loves. So how do we achieve this status? How do we achieve this status in the eyes of God? Ibn Sina, a very prominent Islamic philosopher, identified three paths to Hayat al Tayyibah, three ways to reach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, You can be an Abid, you can be a Zahid, or you can be an Alif. 
An abid is one whose path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is through ibadah. Abid is a servant, a slave, servant of God. You become meticulous in your observance of the Islamic law. Follow the Sharia. Make sure you get up on time, pray all the prayers, fast in Ramadan, give the zakat meticulously. Be a follower of the law to the letter of the law. Fear God and obey Him. That is what an abbot is. And if you live your life as an abbot, you have indeed lived a good life. Then there is those who can take the path of zuhud. They can ask in themselves. Maybe you are rich. Ask in yourself from living a lifestyle that is appropriate to your wealth. Live a lifestyle much below what you make and share that with others. Be more generous to others than to yourself. The good means to be abstinence, to practice abstinence, abstinence from the pleasures of life. Don't always eat good food. It is also a way to focus on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through love of God. You do abstinence so that you fall in love with God and come closer to God. The third path is the path of an Arif, one who knows God. And this is something which is essentially available to those who are students of the Quran. Because it is in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed his fitrah, has revealed his attributes and his essence, his zab and his sifat. His fitrah are those who understand the Quran and have the knowledge of the Quran. For them, this knowledge is they are from among the Arifin. You are all familiar with the prominent hadith which is often quoted. Man arafa nafsahu fakhat arafa rabbahu. He who knows himself knows his Lord. There is another tradition that goes along with it in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He who hopes for someone other than me, he who trusts in someone other than me, he who seeks support from someone other than me does not know me. He who does not know me does not worship me. And he who does not worship me has earned my displeasure. This is very important. The sequence is beautiful. If you seek solace, from something other than God, it is obviously shirk. But it is also a confession of your lack of awareness and knowledge of God. If you know God, why will you seek solace anywhere else? If you know of God, why will you seek contentment and peace anywhere else but God? Please keep moving a little bit diagonally forward. There are some spaces here, as more people come in, we should be able to create some more space. So good life, in, in the end, if you say, okay, Professor Khan, this lecture is getting too philosophical. Give me a simple explanation of how I can live a good life. And the answer is simple. Make God your friend. Be friendly towards God. Think of God. Love God. Care about God. Care about the fact whether he cares for you. God doesn't need us. He doesn't need our money, he doesn't need our help, he doesn't need our protection, he needs us nothing. But what we need to worry about and care about is how he cares. So worry about your relationship with God. So those who are enjoying a noble standing in the eyes of God, they are indeed one of Allah or the friends of Allah. And that is what you want to be. You want to be friends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala no matter what the conditions, whether you are living in abundance, in peace, in security and in wealth, or you're living under oppression, in fear and insecurity. The best friend that you can have is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nobody else. Alhamdulillah, I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to go to the next one.
اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى ال ابراهيم وعلى ال ابراهيم انك حميد مجيد before i forget there are four announcements that i have to make an uncle of one of the parents of the children here is having complications with the liver transplant he is is currently in france and his condition is very critical for the family requesting that all of you pray for his well being and his for health inshallah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant him shifa and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant patience and fortitude to his family so that they can face this challenge with the best way possible Amen. the children of the school are sending food outside please go and enjoy yourself uh, that is one way to support the mosque the third thing is that as you know that we have changed the roof of this entire building we are still some work needs to be done so if you can help in any way cash or labor you're welcome you're welcome to come here on the weekend and help clean up the place or fix the roof if you are if you have the aptitude to do those work or if you can contribute something towards the roof uh, that will be best <coughs> so in this circumstances we can't be living completely isolated i want you to realize that things are not really that bad in june 2015 when we looked at the surveys and opinions of american muslims american muslims had reached their lowest level of favorability in a long time which means that only 40% americans had a good impression of america muslims the best impression was for american jews which was around 67 to 70% so 70% of americans say that the jewish community is very good and only 40% americans had a good view of muslims but today thanks to our president 70% of americans have a positive view of muslims the most popular religious community as of february 2017 in this country is all the american muslims so there are things that people plan and then there is god who is a better planner of things but i must also tell you and remind you of something that imam ali the lawa who used to say he says when you make enemies don't become such a strong enemy of somebody because one day you could be friends with that person don't preclude the possibility of an alliance of friendship and when you become friends with somebody do not preclude the possibility that this friend could be a threat to you to later on so today there are americans in our country who are upset with the politics of our president and they are supporting us as an instrument of opposition to the president and not necessarily supporting the muslim community and its values and its beliefs so don't forget that don't get carried away the point is what should we do i think this is a great opportunity for american muslims to manifest not only to america but to the rest of the world what is the true value of our faith and our beliefs today the reason why across the world people are afraid of us and are building fences with electricity to keep us out is because they are afraid of certain things that muslims do in the name of islam so we have two tasks to do one is to alter the image of islam that exists in the minds of those we live with but not only that but also fight and rescue the reality of islam within our community we want everyone to live a good life but the definition of good life should be safety for everybody respect for everybody love for everybody not violence threat and fear and that is very important allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in an ayah in surah an-nisa a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim ya ayyuhallazina amanu kunu khawwamina bil qisti shuhada alillah this is a very famous ayah about justice but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this that o you who believe the way you bear witness is by standing up firmly and consistently for justice and i have said before the more common word for justice in arabic is adl but in these ayahs from the quran allah subhanahu wa taala is using a different connotation just like in surah al-rahman 
Wachimul Bisqisti Wala Tuqsirul Mizan. Establish justice without corrupting the balance. And the reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using this is because he's talking about what we today call social justice. Stand firmly for social justice. That's how you live a good life. So what does it mean? How do you stand firmly for social justice today? There are lots of allies today in America who are fighting for the rights of Muslims. What Muslims need to do is to fight for America, not for Muslims. We fight to save this country and its values of equality, its freedom of religion and social justice. Make sure that no minority is left behind. Make sure that no religious community feels threatened. Make sure that nobody, regardless of their gender, feels as if they do not belong. We fight for everyone who thinks they are American whether they are documented or not. This is God's earth. And God will hold us all responsibility for the absence of justice in the societies that we live in. So one way of fighting and acquiring and living a good life is to sign up for social justice in this life. ربنا أعطينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة وحسنة وحين عذاب النار إن الله يعمر بالأجل والإحسان في تلك القرى وينهى الفشل المنكر وبغي يعيزكم لعلكم تذكرون وأقيموا الصلاة